They destroy relationships, your looks, your personal hygiene, your career prospects, and even your psyche. But hell if we don't still love them. That's right, I'm talking about video games. And what's that? You're an aspiring developer looking to destroy more lives with your digital crack? Great. I'm going to show you how to make a video game in 2021. But before we do that, let's reminisce, I mean, uh, point and laugh at how games used to be. Remember when we could purchase a game on a disc? Or, you know, one of those floppy things or a cartridge? Put it in the machine and immediately start playing? Oh, 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 do you remember being able to replay hours of content by choosing different dialogue options legitimately and then walking down completely opposite roads to the first path you took and getting a completely different ending? Oh, 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 remember when we could trust developers to release a sequel with the same rich, compelling stories and memorable characters cherished by fans for decades? Oh, and how games used to ship with minimal but hilarious bugs and glitches that just made the game more fun. Oh, and do you remember when there were no loot crates, in-game marketplaces, season passes, paywalls, pay-to-win features, premium time skip mechanics, and microtransactions in general? Ah oh, yes, the days when buying a $60 title meant owning it for life and completely. And then maybe having the option to buy DLC or an expansion pack that was made months later, completely from scratch, and with fresh original content. Good times, eh? I mean, uh, no, no, terrible, awful times. What schmucks we were. Anyway, you're here to do the complete opposite of all that. And before I consume your soul, I mean, uh, put you to work in a friendly, toxic-free environment, we need to quickly check off some requirements. 1. Relinquishing all creative freedom while being completely flexible to sudden changes and demands. Check. 2. Long, grueling hours where you quickly burn out and hate what you once considered your most cherished IP. 3. A willingness to rush out an unfinished, unpolished piece of crap that our marketing team will completely misrepresent. 4. More long hours fixing and completing the game after receiving reams and reams of hate from fans who once trusted and respected your studio. 5. The understanding that one day you'll get sick of this shit, quit and make your own studio. Check. Uh, but please don't do that. We just hate having to sue people with our crack team of ace lawyers. So, the first step is to work your ass off developing this basic bitch skeleton with a few features we can completely lie about and misrepresent during the advertising campaign. Once you've done that, we're going to release the game as an early access so we can trick customers into paying to be beta testers. Ain't that grand? They actually pay us to play the alpha. Haha! <laughs> and give feedback. You couldn't write this shit. Anyhow, once we put that steaming pile of crap onto Steam, we're going to periodically drop updates with quirky, out there patch notes and developer commentary to make it seem like we're a cool, laid-back studio who really cares. And if that don't work, we'll just skip the early access thing altogether and just keep the game in development for 8 years, while constantly dropping teasers and trailers to keep the hype train going. And what we'll do is promise loads of shit, like functioning AI, cops that actually chase you for shooting an old person in the head, and a living, breathing world where gunplay rivals that of the next Battlefield game. Ha, huh, yeah right. And don't worry, you're not actually going to put any of those things into the game, yet. Maybe one day. We don't ship finished products here anymore, that's for schmucks. So, the next step is damage control. As you might have guessed, those pesky loyal fans are going to be pretty pissed off that we didn't deliver on all those promises, and instead released a pile of crap despite them paying upwards of $80 during pre-orders. Why do people pre-order games when they don't trust us no more? I don't know. It's like an abusive relationship. No matter how much we mistreat them, they keep coming back for more. Okay, so then what we're gonna do is release a bunch of, you know, try-hard apologies and lay it on real thick. Maybe promise some free DLC that we already created anyway for this exact scenario. And it don't matter if our reputation is completely ruined because we already got the money. Besides, the fans still kind of respect us for our previous titles and still have that little shred of hope that maybe we'll release a good sequel sometime down the line. After all, this is blown over and we finally have something resembling what they uh, expected from us but didn't deliver the first time, it's time to monetize. Uh, so, you know, you don't want to make someone pay for your game just once. That's lame, that's stupid. Instead, we're going to make the game into a live service with new features and add-ons being released consistently that they'll have to pay for. It's all about the microtransactions too. You know, you want people to go in there and pay for shit like XP bonuses, power-ups, cosmetics, houses, pets, all that crap. Maybe we'll even throw in a subscription fee if we release a multiplayer aspect to the game. 
And yep, you guessed it, it's gonna be a basic bitch battle royale with loot crates, cosmetics, all those things I mentioned earlier with the XP buffs and crap, and maybe shitloads of sponsorship opportunities for the shills and chicks with big boobies who will play on Twitch. And how are we gonna make people keep playing this shit you ask? Easy, we'll just include some manipulative and predatory techniques to keep them addicted. Like random loot drops, which may contain a legendary item, or not. And a gameplay loop that gives you just the right amount of serotonin to keep you in front of the screen until your next hit. Are we drug dealers? Kinda, but they make the most money anyway, so why not? Oh, and you want to know the story? Uh, oh yeah, the game has a story, right? Well, the thing is, our all-knowing and all-seeing overlord has deemed it necessary to follow whatever those wacky-haired people on Twitch are saying. We're gonna cram the game with identity politics and definitely avoid representing people in a subtle and believable way. Nah, we're gonna be really in their face about it. Gamers need to be conditioned. So we can just forget about sexualizing women. But it's totally cool to sexualize men though. You know, instead of just finding a middle ground where both genders are sexualized equally and shamelessly, like in cool games such as Hades, or any Japanese game ever made, what we really want to do is represent the average woman and the average man and make them more realistic, or whatever that means. Do all games do this now? No, of course not, but we are. And why? Because we're the champions of progress and change. And who cares if we sacrifice an awesome story and beloved characters in the process? We didn't write them. Oh, oh wait, did you? Tough shit. I'm the one cashing your paycheck, so you gotta do whatever I tell you. <laughs> uh, oh wait, I'm getting a call. Yeah? Uh-huh. What? Sales are down? The majority of gamers load us now? They aren't blaming the developers, but the corporate suits who are completely out of touch? Uh-huh. Uh, we should start firing people right away who came up with these stupid ideas? Uh, okay, okay, bye. Well, if that's what's gonna make us money, I guess that's what we gotta do. Whew, okay kid, change of plans. Everything I just said for the past six or seven minutes, uh, I think ignore it, I, I don't know. We're gonna go back to tits and white people. Is that a good thing? Uh, maybe. Should we try to instead find a tasteful and authentic middle ground that includes everyone in a tasteful and believable way without pushing it in people's faces? Eh, uh, fuck no. We're gonna keep flip-flopping wildly until we get it right. Quick, fire up those overly cinematic and misrepresentative cutscenes. It's time to dupe some schmucks.